Hello again, it's Plank here with another story. So sit around, kids, while Grandpa tells you a story about a young gherkin and plank out in the world, experiencing life. This is an oldie but goodie. Um, it's a classic throwback, if you will. Um, this happened in the early 90s. No, nah, not early 90s, mid 90s. I don't, we weren't 21 yet, I know that much. Uh, probably like 18, 19 when this occurred. Uh, anywho, we, it was New Year's Eve, and, uh, we were both working at Waves Music, which was a CD store, uh, out where we lived at. Yes, there were stores that sold CDs. Um, (laughs) and, uh, we worked with one of the greatest bosses, um, her, uh, boyfriend worked next door to us at a cigar shop, and he always had the kindest, freshest, most delicious nugs of weed available at all times. It was a blessing to work with these two, uh, cause you were almost guaranteed to just get shit face hammered from one, pu- one puff with these two. Uh, and they were they were trained marijuana assassins. <laughs> so we decide that we all were going to go out for New Year's Eve together. A whole group of us that worked at uh, Waves and the cigar store next door. But Gherkin and I, we weren't 21 yet. So we had to sneak in to a bar. So there's about a group, I want to say of eight of us. Um, But before we decide to go, we think it's a grand idea to get some gel tabs and trip on LSD um, to make this New Year's Eve very eventful. So, um, prior to the engagement, we gather up our contacts, get some LSD, Take the hits. We're on our way before it kicks in, and um, we're at the. We sneak into the bar. Um, nobody is the wiser. We're all hanging out, chit chatting, having a good little time, and things like that. Um, but I forgot to mention this. Uh, we we lived. We grew up in a very small town, so everybody knew each other, <laughs> and everybody kind of hang around, hung around with each other. So. To the point of the story, we were all partying, having ourselves a good time, and the LSD starts kicking in. And this is a nautical-themed bar slash restaurant, so there's a lot of fish around and a lot of, like, hanging stuff from the ceilings and things like that. So as this LSD is starting to kick in, I'm really having a good time. Things are floating. Things are swimming. Ariel's singing in the sea. Sebastian the crab is passing me drinks. I'm having a great time. Um, And then I look, and who do I see coming in to the bar to also have a great time this New Year's Eve was my mother and my older brother. All right, with their friends. So, of course, they see us. Hey, everybody, how's everybody doing? There's eight of us, and we're all tripping balls in this restaurant. Everybody's just kind of froze, like, ah, we're okay, just having a good time. And she's like, are you guys okay? Oh, yeah, We're, we're all good. We're having fun. All right, well, we're going to go get some drinks. We'll see you around. Okay. So here we are. My mom shows up while I'm deep into this LSD trip. So I decide I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave the bar, go into the little foyer area. And in the little foyer area, they have a little gift shop and things like that. My older brother shows up, and he's just talking to me, like, nonstop, like, about... I don't know, because the fucking LSD has kicked in, and I'm having a great time. And I'm taking a look around, and he's like, are you okay? I was like, yeah, these fish, they are swimming 
everywhere. <laughs> and he's like, how fucked up are you? <laughs> Very fucked up, brother. Very fucked up. And he's like, all right, well, have yourself a good night. Sure thing. So uh, we decide that this scene is starting to get a little too real. Uh, a little too much action going on for this trip. So we all decide we want to smoke, you know, to ease it back a little bit, get blazed. So we, we go back to uh, our boss's place. And they had just moved in. They really hadn't furnished the place yet. And they, uh, you know, they had the small stuff, a couple of chairs, some, uh, some uh, curtains up and things like that. But I remember walking around in this house, uh, checking things out, and the heater kicked on, and the the air from the heater was hitting the the blinds and the curtains, and it was just waving around. And I, what felt like an eternity of me standing there staring at these fucking blinds um, <laughs> until somebody like kicks me out of the trance and I was like oh shit yeah yeah I gotta go piss so I go upstairs to go use the bathroom and I see myself in the mirror and I'm gonna tell you out of my own experience do not look at yourself in the mirror while you're tripping it was a little unsettling to me watching my face fucking melt and do weird shit like a lava lamp <laughs> um, so I had to basically run out of the bathroom while zipping up my pants, trying not to get my dick stuck <laughs> in the zipper. So, um, somehow, I, I, I have no idea how this occurred. We ended up at another friend's house. We had to drive because the car was there, so we drove fucking tripping balls to this other friend's house. Um, and hung out there for a little bit, riding this out. So, we decide that it's probably best not to drive anymore. Like, we're really fucking peaking, and that weed is just, it's just so much going on. So, I was like, you know, I'm going to call for a cab to come pick us up. But I didn't know the number. And this is like pre-cell phone, major cell phone days. So... Uh, I asked for a phone book. Dude gives me a phone book. Um, go to make a call. But if you've ever tried to read while peeking on LSD, it is, it's just not fucking happening. The letters are moving all over the damn place. Um, the pages are wavy and melting. And it was just impossible. Got somebody to help us to make the phone call. And I'm talking to the cab place to tell them to come pick us up. But I am not speaking coherently enough for them to understand where it is that I'm at. They end up hanging up on me four times. <laughs> and at that point in time, I'm like, shit, this is just isn't going to work. And somebody else in the group convinced us that we should probably go outside and hang out in the woods, in the fucking cold, on New Year's Eve, peeking on LSD. <laughs> uh, so, Gherkin and I decided we're going to fucking go get some fresh air, smoke some cigarettes, assess the situation while we're still <laughs> peeking on LSD. Um, it's weird how this chain of events comes about, because I'm jumping around, but I'm so fucked up, this is just like the pieces that I remember occurring um anywho we decide it's cold or we're out there in the woods and our friend and his girlfriend are down to their underwear running around in the grass frolicking and being hippies of course uh doing their thing so we get in the car and turn on the heat and watch the window defrost for what felt like forever and after the window defrost, I say to myself, dude, Gherkin, I can fucking do this. I can drive us home. Let's fucking do this. I was like, are you sure? Yeah, I got it. Ball, I, I got this. I can do this. 
So we decided we're going to drive home, and we bounced out. And we are driving, fortunate enough, it was late enough that nobody was around, and uh, there was nobody on the streets. But we are driving 25 in a 50 mile per hour uh, <laughs> lane to go home. Which is normally a 15 minute drive, which turned into fucking probably 45 minutes. I don't know. To be honest, I, I, I couldn't tell you. It could have taken me seven hours to get there. I know that it was dark when I left. It was still dark when I got home. Um, anywho, on our way home, there is this bridge with a hill on it. And we come to the bridge and I'm like, Gherkin, this is going to be intense. This is going to be like the wildest shit ever. It was a full moon night, bright stars. Uh, it's a coastal town, so you can see the ocean. You can see the water, the sound out there. And we're like, fucking let's do this. And we start driving over the bridge. And it was like we were going into the stairway to heaven, just slowly climbing higher and higher into the stars. And I've got my head back in the chair like I'm blasting off in a rocket at 7 G's just pushing back on me and we're going 25 fucking miles an hour up this hill and when we reach the top both of us just kind of, kind of gasp for air like <gasps> and then they start to go down the hill and it's faster than I expect so I'm like slamming on the brakes and finally make it over the hill of this huge bridge um but cruise the rest of the way home, get home, I, and, and this part I remember vividly because this is one of my favorite albums, um, make it in the house, uh, I turn on the lights in my room, I've had this grand, wonderful trip, I want to ride the rest of the night out with this just nice feeling, and I put in Underworld Second toughest of the infant CD, which is the fucking shit. If anybody wants to hear that CD, great stuff. All right. And listen to that until I pass out and wake up the next day uh, at like 2 o'clock in the afternoon. <laughs> anyway, there you go. Uh, a wild story of our past. Um, this is Plank with the Go Juice Extravaganza. Uh, come back for more. I'm going to... Give you a couple more um, recordings of some of the stuff that's happened in our past um, and see what you guys think. Hit the subscribe button, give us a thumbs up, leave some, some info in the comments, or else I will come to your house and I will fuck your mother. Alright, have a good night.